meetings being live streamed. Got it. Awesome. We're on. We're on. Perfect. Let's see if we can make this one seamless. We're live. All right. Perfect. So um, welcome back, everybody. This is another episode of Let's Talk. I'm super excited about the gentleman that we have on here today. I've known him for a short period of time, maybe maybe five years or so. And uh, man, he has just the, the amount of time that I've been able to spend with this gentleman has been a blessing. And I've learned so much from him and I'm excited to hear from him today. And, you know, I'm going to bring Tom in here to introduce him because they've known each other for over 20 years now. And, uh, you know, Tom has this great idea a long time ago to do this Let's Talk. And when we talked about this, honestly, I, I never said this, KR, but when we talked about this whole idea, the first thing I said is, man, wouldn't it be awesome to have KR on? Like, that would be someone that people can listen to and learn a ton from. So I'm excited for this Let's Talk. And Tom, I appreciate you coming up with this great idea. And I know that, you know, over the past how many years we've been friends, we've been through so much together, we've had so much fun, but I really feel like we've focused mainly on trying to make a difference in the world, trying to be a bright light in a dark time. And, and, and I really feel like through this program, we're doing that. And, and I'm, I'm honored to do this with you. So Tom, if you want to kick us off today, that would be great. Well, yeah, thank you, Paul. That's awesome. I appreciate the, uh, the, the, the great comments. Um, yeah, Karen and I met, we were just talking about that, it's been uh, 20 plus years ago um, through a business relationship. And, and I watched him as a, a, a driven businessman. Um, I know there were times we were in the middle of the night working on stuff just because that's what you did. And uh, um, not because I had to be there because something was broken, but, but it was like, we're doing this and we're going to move forward with this. So let's get it done. And we would, we would spend lots of time to points where sometimes you'd locked me in the building and left and, and then and came back a little oh, while I later. I, I didn't have recall of that, but uh, I, locked I, you I, in the building, probably I, Hotel California. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so then, and then um, as time went on, there the, the uh, um, you you continued your job as a as a police officer, ran ran a business, and, and grew it to uh, 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 a fair size, a number of locations, and and I watched that happen. And then you went off to get a law degree, and and um, um, we're, we're, we sort of separated, um, our paths separated for, for, for a while. Yeah, and for and I, um, 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 I don't know where I ran into you or somehow we, we, we came back together and connected again. And it was a completely different man that I met that left. And, and, and um, um, I mean, we can get into, you can tell a little bit of your story of how you got to, to where you are today from, from uh, that, that, let's call it early life. So sure. um, maybe you can just give a little bit of your story of, of, of where you've been and, and how you got here today and why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, I, I just want to say thanks. It's great. Like, you know, I, I remember meeting Paul for the first time. Tom brought him over to my place and we sat, you know, in, in my office. And I think we just talked for hours. Mm -hmm. so it's my pleasure to be here. I really appreciate what you guys are doing. And it's just um, it's just enjoyable to see how other people can be uh, able to take something away and maybe apply it in their own life. So I'm happy to share my mistakes and where I am now so that people can uh, not have to go through the same challenges that we've all gone through. So at least that's what I tell my teenage son all the time. So, um, but uh, yeah, you know, I think Tom, I think you nailed it. I, I think since I was, I, you know, I can remember actually a pivotal, mo pivotal moment when I was in my teens where I just had this thought in life that I had to have purpose. And um and it, and it drove me and you met me in the, the midst of my, in my twenties when, uh, when, when I, um, when sleep was optional, that's not the case anymore. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I was working at the police department and doing the businesses and I was equally applying myself with bigger. And, um, and then, uh, you know, there, there were some, some changes that happened even in my policing career that shifted my trajectory. And, and, and I just wanted to, I wanted to apply myself more and I thought, you know, there's probably no better way to be able to do that and advance in the police department than, uh, than obtaining a law degree. My dad had returned uh, when he was a, a younger police officer to school and got his business degree and that helped him to the promotional track and I thought that would be a great thing for me as a police officer. Um, 
once I got accepted and went through everything, I, I, I wasn't ex, uh, granted a leave of absence. So I had to make a decision of whether I was going to stay with the police department or go on to uh, obtain my law degree. And obviously, I, I chose the latter. But I always thought that I was going to return. I always enjoyed policing. I policed for 10 years. I thought that uh, when I left, it was sort of like the Seinfeld moment. I, you know, I, I went out on a high note and and sometimes I talk to some of my my colleagues that are there, and they, they count down the days to their retirement. And uh, uh, I, I I don't know, maybe maybe that's where I would have been. I don't know, but I, I always have fond memories of it. But I think it was I, I went on um, to get my law degree, and then you know once once everybody goes to law school, you know the, the clamor is about you know are you gonna are you gonna get a job on Bay Street? And so everybody jockeys for that because there's only a certain percentage and. So you work really hard to do that and you go through, you know, these, you know, firm like interviews and, you know, li literally it, it, it's sort of like the firm. I remember, you know, one of the, one of the law firms I went to, you know, had a pool table in the front lobby and the other one, you know, the same one picked us up in a limousine and all that stuff. So you, 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 you get this model of what success is like and you're driven towards it with purpose. And what I found is that once I achieved that, it was like, it's like I got there and I'm like, there's nothing here. <laughs> and uh, don't get me wrong. It, 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 it's great to serve in excellence and in a legal capacity. But what I strove for my whole life, it just it just wasn't there. It was almost like the pursuit was the passion rather than the end goal. And and I start to realize that, you know, where I think we're all wired to have purpose. But I think we have to understand what the substance of that purpose is. And I, I don't think I went there. I think, I think I was so driven on the concept of purpose, I never got to the ultimate why. And the reality is it started to cost me on the personal side and, and at a great expense. And I found that you know after my first year of law school, uh, my wife and I broke up. I had two young children at the time. Um, I, had, I, I was involved in another uh, relationship. That relationship broke up after uh, several years. And I started to scratch my head thinking, okay, there's something wrong here. Of course, I never thought that it was me. Um, and, but upon greater reflection, the reality is it was me. And I, I had prioritized my success and where I was going over the relationships that I was surrounded with in my life. And, um, and, I, and I came to this place through truly a miraculous series of events to start to realize that what I was fixing my eyes on really wasn't the ultimate goal. And what I, what I had been gifted in relationships in that previously um, was really the prize. And it shifted my perspective completely. And uh, like I said, through a miraculous series of events, certain things happened. My wife and I reconciled after five and a half years of being separated. And our family reconciled. I always get emotional when I talk about that. And, you know, and we've, been, we've been back together for for so long now, my wife and I have been married 23 years now, and um, and you know our families united, and and I just I'm just in this place where I get to appreciate the relationships that are around me, and I get to invest in those relationships, and I still get to enjoy my work and what I do, and and still given great opportunities, but in every opportunity, I really take a look and I go, you know, where is that relationship? How can I serve uh, for those that are around me? So. And 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 I and I don't know if we mentioned or if it's if it's there leader in the faith community you did become a pastor in in, in your in your adoption of your new life uh, that you you've taken on for yourself. Yeah, I did. You know, in in 2012 was when I really had a transformative moment in my faith. I always believed in God, but um, I think I, I think I found it very convenient to believe in God being at quite a distance and not being in that place where it really applied on the day-to-day -day level in my life. And, and, and I just came to this place where I just realized I was, uh, you know, I, I can't say it anymore, frankly, I was rather self-centered and uh, I was just focused on me. And, uh, and I knew that that had to change. I had to give that up and I, I couldn't even see my own folly. And, um, and afterwards it was just like, it's like what Paul says, it's like being this bright light, like you all of a sudden you realize, my gosh, there's different priorities that you can focus in on. And it doesn't, it actually doesn't mean that you, you know, you don't serve in excellence in business or actually, I think that I actually function much better in business now 
and, and in the various roles that I'm in and much more disciplined and, and much more efficient than I did before, expending all of this energy, but with the wrong focus. And so, yeah, several years later, I, I did become a pastor of a small church. We, we, we serve in a very needy community in our city. And again, it's another place where we get to give back and it's, it's truly a reward. And Debbie and I were just talking about that the other day, and she said she much enjoys your sermons. So I, I guess you're doing a great job. Well, that's, that's good. I'll, I'll take that all day long. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think the, um, the key in all that, and I think it's like in everything, in sales, you, you, you develop a relationship. And, and it's the relationships in our life that really define who we are and, and a lot of who we are anyway and, 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 and make us give us satisfaction once we realize that that's the important thing. I know when we first met Paul, um, Debbie and I and met Paul and Tara. Um, we were different people than we are today. I think we kind of had a, a, a change and shift at about the same time, maybe a little after you got you did, and, and uh, um, probably more self centered then and, and now more focused on who true friends really are. And, and, and you know those people, you don't have to, to, to guess, you, you know your true friends. And, and it gives you a whole outlook that's completely different in, 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 uh, um, in, in how you look at life, I guess. Right? Yeah, truly. You, you said, um, I love what you said. The, the pat, the pat, the pursuit is no, the passion is in the pursuit. How, how did you say that? The, yeah, I, I, I said, I think I found the passion in the pursuit rather yes, than in yeah. the end goal. Yeah. Where, where, you know, there's so many times where you, you run for something and that the run is really the goal. Like the run is actually the victory. You, you finish the run, you get the goal, right? And then it's like, oh, right? It's like right now, you know, Tara and I have five children. Yeah. And I mean, that's been a long run, lots of work, a lot, you know. And yesterday, um, the kids went out yesterday and they've been overnight because uh, they really haven't stayed out a lot. And the newborn hasn't stayed out at all, first time, where we've had almost 24 hours of no kids. Where, I mean, when the kids are here, it's like, oh my God, ah, ah, we're going crazy. And by today, actually went out for breakfast with Tom and Deb this morning. And Tara's like, oh, and he's got four teeth already. And right away, it just melts me. Like, oh, yeah. I miss him so much. But I'm like, but yesterday, I couldn't handle it anymore. Like, yeah. what, what, but it's that because when you're in the pursuit, right? When you're chasing after the dream, when you're making your life, right? Because most people, they chase after a living instead yeah. of making a life. When you're making that life, as much as life gets crazy, that's really the time that we should treasure. Yeah, and, and I, I think that there was this shift in perspective where, I, you know, I'm sure everybody saw the cartoon of the donkey with the carrot in front of it. And, and I, I sort of felt like that that was my life. And then you got the carrot and you're like, it's just a carrot. And, 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 and when I'm taking a look at it, you know, especially from a faith perspective, I take a look at it and. I, I see that, you know, this, this life perspective or this life goal intersects with the present. And so instead of trying to go, man, when this happens, then, then I'm going to be happy. You can actually reflect and go, man, today is awesome. And, and, and what, what is the gift of, of today going to bring and the relationships that I'm going to connect with? And, and then every day you just get to start out that way. And, and, I, you know, I, I've experienced joy in that way where rather before I think I was pursuing something that was rather a fallacy. Um, so do you, do you set goals for yourself and, 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 and still have like, like, like business goals or life goals or anything like that? Or do you just not take life as it comes towards you? Well, it's very, it's a very interesting question. So, you know, once you, once you become a pastor and once you start to drive into your faith, you start to realize that, um, your orientation just aligns to a very different perspective. And so, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't anymore. Um, I, I have a general understanding of maybe a trajectory of where I'm going, uh, but I don't try to map it out in, in, a, in a detailed way anymore because I actually, I start to realize that I can't even imagine what would come in, my, in any pursuit. And, and, and again, my objectives are completely different. So I don't have a pursuit to earn X amount of dollars or to be this. Um, I really, I'm really focused on what's around me. What am I gifted in? How do I invest? How do I serve those that are around me? And then whatever opens up, opens up. And obviously, you know, a, a pretty good example of that is, 
last, you know, last year, somebody calls me out of the blue, says, hey, do you want to host a national television show? Right? I like, I wasn't looking to host a national television show at all. Zero. Wasn't wasn't on my radar. And in fact, when I, you know, I started to contemplate this, I go, you know, is this something that I even really want? And, um, you know, I, I went through, I, I did accept it. I've had a lot of fun with that. And, and I enjoy that. But I could have forecasted that five years ago. I could have said here, you know, I want to try, or maybe I could try to get there, but I probably would have got there for the wrong reasons. And so when I'm in, in that space, I continually am able to do that. So instead of serving those that are in my family or in my church community, then I take a look at you know, how do you serve Canadians in this capacity? And, and when you're when you're saying here, you know, when I, when I digest a story, how am I going to give something different to them? And much like you guys are doing on the show, how do you how do you shine a light on things that might not have a light shine on shine on it? Cool. I, well, I just say, oh, go ahead, Paul. No, I was just going to say, you know, I mean, all of us are very busy. I mean, we 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 run companies, we have family, we we do so much. But for yourself, what would you say are some of the key techniques or the key things that you do? When it comes to managing time, and I mean, I know obviously you live by a schedule in certain in certain areas. Yes. Yeah. Um, but what are some of the key things that you know for a busy person, especially somebody plugging into this, someone who's busy, and you know, we can be busy and accomplish a lot, but we can then struggle in our marriage, struggle as parents, struggle in our faith, wherever some of the most important things that will get put on the back burner. And what, what would you say some of the some of the things that you may do in that area to help? Yeah, you know, I, I, I find I find you you hit on a couple of key areas. I, I always find people say I don't have enough time. I actually find that it's probably slightly nuanced and it's your priorities are in a different place. And so I find it's what do you prioritize? So like I, I don't go on social media. Period. Yeah. And so, you know, I find once in a while, if I, if I, you know, sometimes I use it to message somebody or whatever, very efficient for that. I find sometimes if I get trapped going down two or three, I can sort of feel that time sucking uh, environment. And I'm just like, I, I just don't have time for that. Uh, so, you know, my, 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 my kids and that will now laugh at me because I go to bed at nine, right? <laughs> I get up at five. But, but I have, a, you know, I can do a lot more in these places and, and there's certain things that are a real priority. So obviously from my faith background, I, I, have, I have time every day I dedicate in devotions and, and that's a priority. And for, for my legal career, I could easily be working 90 plus hours a week. I don't, I, I, I work an X, X amount of hours, uh, but when I go home, I don't think about my files. On the weekend, I don't think about my files. And that, had, that was a real shift, I, you know, coming from being previously, you know, you know, for lack of a better word, a workaholic, where you're always thinking. I find that when you prioritize something in that regard, I may very well actually be with my wife at dinner, but my mind's somewhere else. Yes. Yeah. And so how can, how can I be listening to her in her day and what she's saying? Because that's important. Your wife, your wife comes, I, I find, I go home and my wife has this little balloon of air that she has to expect to be able to tell me about her day and i need to be in this place to go that's important and so i find it's more about the prioritization i'm I, i'm i'm confident i'm probably busier than almost most people i know um but i but i feel like there's a real rhythm to it yeah i think I, it's important that sorry tom um you're good <laughs> uh, i think <laughs> Let me talk. I never get to talk. No. <laughs> um, I think it's important what you said there about um, when when you work these specific times and then you shut it down. Where some people, you know, you can work all day, you can get things done, but really you're not getting it done to the best ability because you're killing yourself. Where if you give yourself that time where you know, I don't work here and I don't work here, and that's going to help me better serve you because when I do what I need to do, I can actually do what I need to do. Yeah, I, I come in fresh into work and it's like, you know, my mind's not fatigued. And, and, and even for me, you know, it, you know, it's classic in the Christian faith to have a Sabbath. I don't think it has to be a Saturday or Sunday or whatever, but I, I do. I take Sunday off. I don't do work. Like I don't do, I don't do little work on my computer at home. Like, you know, I'll get to read or uh, go for hikes or be with people, do those things. And it's amazing how my mind just clears. You go all week and you don't even realize the value of the rest until you're in the rest again. 
and 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 then you're rejuvenated and you go again you know you're, you're like well maybe there's something to this so yeah I, I mean, I, I, I'm going to say, I'll be first to admit, I don't necessarily stop at five o'clock. I, I, I might work till six or seven, or I might pick up something later at night. Not that much, but I, I find that I, I easily shut it off and, and, and I, I have no trouble sleeping. People, people in my business often have difficulty sleeping at night because they're thinking about this server or that thing or the other thing. And, and I don't know what it is that I do or how I do it, but I just, I used to have restless nights and not sleep at all, but now whatever it is, content or, or, or just, just let, let the fear go. I, I, I find that, that uh, in fear, I suppose, is part of it. Um, it's easy to shut down and, and, and take that time. Um, it's the creative was, side of your, your, your previous band days where you can go into yeah. a different space of that artist side. And yeah, yeah, the artist not. side's there, not necessarily fully like functional. Maybe, the, uh, maybe it's age. <laughs> <laughs> well, that definitely helps. Yeah, I got out my 4.30 nap, yeah. <laughs> Huh. Uh, uh, the uh, golden see that yeah <laughs> go yeah. ahead no, i'm sorry yeah. uh no i just had to yeah is there anything else you want to add paul are we we good uh yeah no you know what I, 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 kr I, i'd love for you you know in, in wrapping this up I, I appreciate you taking the time and really covering some of the things where you know you've you've done so much different stuff you can bring so many different perspectives to the table from where you start, you, you, you get someone, you look at all these books behind me, right? And the way books are written, good books are written through a lifetime, right? And I mean, you taking time and, you know, speaking on here or, or writing a book years from now, someone will go through all of that stuff to say, wow, you know what? Look at what he went through right here. If he can do it, I can do it. And man, I think you have so many of those moments because you've done so many different things in your career and just wrapping this up maybe you could just close up on on some of the key things that um you know if you were to um talk about some of the key things that helped you through life i guess the biggest nuggets that you would have to share um what maybe maybe you can wrap us up with something like that yeah you know i, I think it's more a point of reflection of where i am now i i wish i would have been more tuned to certain things earlier on in life but as I take a look at it now, I, I think in a lot of respects, a lot of people are trying to escape the challenges that they have in their lives and, and hoping for a better day if this comes to fruition. And I actually think that there are great lessons in the challenges. And then the question is, how are you established in the midst of your challenge rather than trying to escape it? And I think that if you can change that perspective and you start to go, okay, there's, there's, there's a lot of life lessons when the pain starts to set in. And, and the reality is most of the time that the pain setting in, it's probably as a result of things that you've done before. Maybe not, but you know, sometimes there, there's lots of variables where you're not in control. But in a lot of instances, the pain sets in because maybe there's something off with your perspective. And I, I find that every single time I go, oh, oh, wait a second, I, I'm just looking at it the wrong way. And then you start to go into this place and you go, you know, wisdom comes from many counselors and you have other people in your lives that can speak truth and you, or, or, or even model truth. And you go, wow, man, you know, that guy, that guy's just, that guy's way kinder than I am. Like maybe I got to change in my perspective in that area, or that guy does this well, or this, that, that, you know, that girl does this or whatever the case may be. And, um, you know, it's learning through those places, but then also being open to have a change in your own perspective, to, you know, to, to really try to grab some of that importation from what comes from those that are around you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some people, most people hate change and yeah. not changing is more painful, painful than staying the same. Right. And it's like, you know, it's like the dog sitting on a, on a porch there. I forget the exact joke, but the dog sitting on the porch, just howling and howling and howling. And someone comes over there. What's wrong with your dog? He's always howling. He's like, oh, he's sitting on a nail. But why doesn't he move? Well, because it's easier to just stay there. Doesn't hurt bad enough to move, but it hurts bad enough to complain. And, and that's the problem today for a lot of people. Ah, it doesn't hurt that bad. So I'll just complain, but I won't do anything about it. Well, no, it's a lot easier to just stand up and move over an inch. And then you're not sitting on the nail anymore. And most people, sometimes they need a good mentor or, or, or something like this 
to encourage them to move. Yeah, the, the only thing constant is change, right? So that's right. Uh, but but I you know I fall I fall prey into the same thing. You know I, I reflect and I'm like a lot of times you know my change doesn't come until I'm at the tail end of assessing. Wow, this has been painful for longer than it should have been. But then you start to realize, okay, as soon as that starts to kick in, okay, there, there can be something and, and what's off, what needs to change. And I, I think that it's a real gift. And, and, and friendships and, and, and the, the, the mentorship and whatnot you get from friends also I, I, helps. You guys, are, you guys are largely in a business community. And I, I think from what I've heard from your business community, you guys get it. But I, I, I'm of this mindset, the treasure is the relationship. Yeah. If, if, if you mix that up with money, you've lost perspective. The treasures in the relationship, the money is going to come We're you know, we're, we're blessed to be born in Canada, right? Yeah. We're going to be okay. And if, yeah. if you get up in the morning and you work, you're, you're going to do well, but the treasures in the relationships. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let's leave it there. And that was awesome. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you so for, much. Uh, Appreciate your time. Yeah, my, my pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity. My privilege. Awesome. All right, Tom, you can go ahead and take us off live. Okay, I'll work on it. Have a great day.